So I think a lot of individuals aren't thinking clearly that this is how much money is actually getting thrown away by pricing closer to MSRP. And the reason I explain this to you is because it's important for you to realize everything that's going on out there so that way you can make your best judgment before you start commenting and throwing around words because there's a lot of things that I see out there which is, you know, my LGS is, you know, is such a such a jerk, you know, because he's selling at this price. Like before you bash somebody, put yourself in their shoes, really start thinking about it and decide, okay, what would I do in this situation? Because a lot of times you need to be honest with yourself and that's super, super important to do. And I know it's very difficult, but it's, I mean, that's the honest truth of it all. Scalpers. So here we are again. So I've been reporting on the unethical and illegal practices of Coliseum LLC and the Danny Phantom YouTube brand for some time now. Some of their practices that I've reported on include teaching and encouraging others to scalp, harvesting fewer and customer data, including minors, and sharing it with an undisclosed third party that Daniel has a financial agreement with. Now, there are many more issues with this company and YouTube brand, but if you haven't watched my previous videos, Please take a chance and go back and watch them after this one. With that being said, shortly after the second video released, Daniel James Oosterike, aka Danny Phantom, intentionally filed false information to the Wisconsin Department of Financial Institutions, which is a government agency. Not only did he intentionally file false information to a government agency in regards to his business, but he filed false information in a form that is required under law. So, on February 5th, 2021, Daniel James Oosterreich filed Form 13 to change the address of the primary registered agent, himself. Now, the form he filled out explicitly states that the registered agent must have a physical location in the state of Wisconsin. It also states that P.O. Box addresses may be included as part of the address, but insufficient alone. If we look up the address that Daniel provided, we are returned with the Jackson, Wisconsin, United States Post Office. Now, after contacting the post office, I can confirm that there is no sweet 632. There is no cubbyhole 632 or broom closet 632. But there is a P.O. Box 632. Now remember, this form that he filled out that's required under law as part of his business stated that P.O. Box addresses may be included as part of the address but insufficient alone. And it also stated that the registered agent must have a physical location in the state of Wisconsin. Daniel, who is a manager at FedEx, damn well knows the difference between an office suite and a P.O. box. At least you would hope. Daniel intentionally lied to government agencies and in documents regarding his business because he didn't want anybody finding out the actual address of his operations. Gee, I wonder what other government agencies he's lying to about his business. Now remember, this is the same guy who did numerous videos trying to teach you how to start your own LLC, quote unquote, the right way. So you could buy Pokemon cards at wholesale prices from distributors and then sell them at scalper prices. Now before any of Danny Boy's keyboard warriors start to cry and claim, you can't scalp singles, this isn't scalping, I stand by the Merriam-Webster's dictionary for what scalping means, as it holds more credibility than the worthless opinion of some small lizard brain scalper. Anyone who argues with a dictionary is probably the same type of person who would argue that 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4 because their bank account equals 0. I put these type of people in the same category as flat earthers. However, I am here to discuss the allocations that Daniel has been receiving, or lack thereof. Now, Daniel claims that his reduced allocations are due to the growth in competition. 
do need to understand, and I've talked about this before, is that it is very, very difficult to get product from distributors right now just because the competition level is so intense. Daniel claims that it's just as difficult to acquire product from distributors as it is from retail. It's just as difficult to find product at distributors as it is to find product at retail locations. I just bought eight packs of battle styles from PokemonCenter.com for MSRP, and it showed up within two days. Pokemon is in full overdrive for printing. So what is he about to lead into here? So it's kind of a battle, a constant battle to make sure that you're going out and finding product. Such a brave warrior. I wonder what his battle style is. Single strike? Rapid strike? Nah. It's scammer strike. Let's see what kind of bullshit he has next. One thing that we've been able to do in the past is work with relationships that we've created throughout the years involving very, very large storefronts and very, very large online retailers who specialize in selling on Amazon or on eBay or other places like this that were able to spend uh, a kind of an exorbitant amount of money. Wait, what? What online retailers and stores are you getting your products from when you are not getting them from a distributor? So are you going in and buying out stores? Are you buying out product to sell on your site? So then that way you can claim that there's allocation issues out there and then force people to come buy from you? If you're so concerned about getting Pokemon cards to the right people at the right price, why not cut the bullshit middleman and point people towards those distributors? You almost, you almost thought we forgot for a moment that you're a bullshit con artist. The only reason why you don't is because you're not going to get a cut of the profit. Where at exactly are you getting your product when it's not from a distributor? You claim to be so transparent. I really hope your distributors and Pokemon is watching this. Who cares about how much money that these other shops spent on this product? You're the one going in and you're buying out product from store shelves. So then that way you can turn around and mark it up and put it online. So he claims that for anything that he's going to get at wholesale price, he's going to try and get it as close to MSRP as possible or slightly below. We're going to touch on that in just a minute. But here's where the real catch comes in. Anytime that we have to go out and buy product that's not in print and technically nothing's really in print anymore. but Technically nothing's in print anymore? What the f*** are you talking about? I just bought eight packs. Again, I just bought eight packs off of PokemonCenter.com. I just went to my local Walmart and I picked up Shining Fates boxes, collection boxes. Technically, nothing's in print right now? How f***ing stupid do you think we are? I know you would have to be f***ing stupid to, to stand up for this guy or trust this guy, especially after this bullshit. Anytime that we have to go out and buy product that's not in print and technically nothing's really in print anymore, but anything that we're not able to buy from uh, at wholesale prices, we're going to stick to that, uh, that, that profit margin percentage. So somewhere around 30 to 35 percent, 20, 25 percent in some cases. For anything that's out of print or he has to get that's not at wholesale price, that he's going to charge profit margin percentages and then proceeds to count in fives. He's like the scalper version of the count. 20, 25, 30, 35% markups. Ah, 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 ah. But seriously, this is another reason why this guy is a part of the problem. Daniel claims that he uses promo codes as a way to battle scalpers. The product listings are still up at the prices that they are, meaning that anybody can go to his website before the item is sold out and buy the product at the scalper price. And only those within his closest inner circle that are able to get to the video quick enough can purchase the items at the discounted rate. What he's ultimately done here is found a way to continue to charge the prices that he has, but offer a discount on his prices if you're willing to subscribe and watch his videos. So by the time you've made it to the point in the video where he discloses the promo code, then he's already generated revenue 
off of you for watching the video. And guess what? You only get the item at a discounted rate if you're quick enough. So regardless if he comes right out and says it or writes it on a box or do some stupid trick, he's making money off of you. And how many people do you think are going to fear the item selling out? This is another way that he is lying and tricking his viewers and customers and profiting off of them. All right, we're going to cover one more thing. What is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. I am sorry uh, for my absence over the past couple weeks now. Uh, it's been, what, a little over two and, two and a half weeks uh, since I last recorded a video. Unfortunately, I had some medical things that I needed to take care of. Some of you commented on the last video that I recorded, uh, noticing some things, especially with my hands. So this asshole is still wearing the Band-Aid on his hands from whenever they prick you for a blood test or an IV. Whatever it may have been, his hands weren't shaking. He was just wearing a Band-Aid with the big fat cotton ball on it that they put whenever they, they do the prick or, or take the needle out. And they do it to make your hands stop bleeding. You're supposed to leave it on there for like 20 minutes. Either way, the damn things always fall off whenever you go to wash your hands. Um, and it's, it's usually by the time you leave the hospital or right after. And throughout the entire video, this thing is falling off. As he's opening up packs and he's just rolling it back on. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a little over five years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, they found a carcinoid tumor in my appendix right after my uh, first daughter was born. I spent like three months in the hospital going through various surgeries after the cancer had started spreading uh, to kind of get rid of that. And then so over five years ago, he finds out he has cancer in his appendix. He spends three months in the hospital having surgeries, and they get rid of it. So they probably removed his appendix and did some chemotherapy. It's still very serious. And you go in at least once a year for a check, okay? It's not an inpatient procedure by no means. So they probably do some blood work and maybe some scans. And as you state, everything is fine. Throughout the past five years since then, I've been going in just uh, for regular checkups and to take care of things here and there as they as they pop up because this specific form of cancer spreads through the bloodstream and nothing to worry about. Everything is fine. I uh, got through everything okay. And then after all those treatments were done, I kind of took a few extra days just to kind of hang out with family, be with family and do things like that. So uh, I do apologize uh, for my absence, but I just wanted to be completely transparent, let you guys know what is going on and where I've been. Daniel never comes out and directly says if he still has cancer or not, but he sure as shit implies it. And there are a ton of people, including Mason from Cardinal Gaming, that believe that this man still has cancer or that he just took care of his cancer with this recent break. Daniel then implies that he had taken the website down because he was taking care of his medical issues. Uh, but I am back, and so is the website. You can go over to uh, pkmncoliseum.com. That is back up and running. I had taken it down because of, uh, obviously, I wasn't going to be around to be able to pack up and ship out orders, so uh, Papa uh, and his family came down to try and get through everything that we possibly could. He then tries to use the fact that he had cancer as a way to justify his prices and to start cutting down some of the medical bills. A very, very specific and important reason as to why I am doing this business. Uh, when I first started out five plus years ago, when I first started getting racking up hospital bills and things like that, I wanted to find something out. Pokemon was something that was there for me. It was something that has always been there for me and something that I was really able to lean on to kind of get me through it, you know, from a, from a mental acu acuity standpoint of things. But it was also something that eventually as I learned more and read more and researched more, I finally realized maybe this is something that I can really start using uh, my passion for and starting to earn some extra money on the side so I can start paying down some of this medical debt that I've accumulated and, you know, start really looking forward to building this wonderful wonderful lifestyle for my family. You know, I've talked before in the past on this channel about being able to put my kids through college and paying for their wedding and things like that and really trying to set my family up for the best possible life that they could they could have. In what video did you state 
that profits from Coliseum LLC and your YouTube channel go towards your medical bills for cancer. At first, you claim that you charge the prices that you do because of market value. Then you claim that you, you're going to charge the prices that you do because it's for items out of print or items you can't buy at wholesale, but also everything's technically out of print according to you. Then it's because you need to be able to provide a certain lifestyle for you and your family and to pay your medical bills. What video before now did you state that you have cancer and that this, that your company and in this channel was to pay for it. Do a GoFundMe, do a fundraiser. Don't try to hide behind your medical issues and use them as an excuse to rip people off or to use it as damage control because you and your channel aren't doing so well right now after I've exposed the bullshit that you do. People like him have went to prison pulling shit like this. You're in a well-paid position with FedEx. You have full benefits for you and your entire family. You have life insurance for you and your entire family. You're making revenue off of your videos. And people simply just clicking on your site. You're trying to use the fact that you had cancer as a way to get sympathy from others so that they can subscribe to you, watch your videos, and purchase your overpriced damage cards. You know, the ones that you sit on top of, like it's some sort of Pokemon scalper throne. I guess you really are trying to be the Steve Jobs of Pokemon. You are a lying, narcissistic scammer trying to exploit people so that way you can boost your sales and your YouTube views. You're not the fucking Walter White of Pokemon. And I think a lot of individuals aren't thinking clearly that this is how much money is actually getting thrown away by pricing closer to MSRP. And the reason I explain this to you is because it's important for you to realize everything that's going on out there so that way you can make your best judgment before you start commenting and throwing around words because there's a lot of things that I see out there which is, you know, this, my LGS is, this, this is, you know, okay. is such a, this such a jerk, you know, because he's selling now. at this price. Like before you bash somebody, put yourself in their shoes, really start thinking about it and decide, okay, what would I do in this situation? Situation because a lot of times you need to be honest with yourself and that's super super important to do and I know it's very difficult but it's I mean that's the honest truth of it all scalpers